Welcome to History on the Hooch, history education in the Chattahoochee Valley. My name is Dr. Rick Gardner. I'm the Associate Professor of History Education here at Columbus State University. And this program is a cooperative effort of the Chattahoochee Valley Sesquicentennial Committee, the Ivy Center for the Cultural Approach to History, and the History Program of Columbus State as well as Columbus State University TV. 2011 to 2015 mark the sesquicentennial which is the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War. And Columbus had a number of significant uh, roles in that event, um, even more as the war continued on and approached its end. And what we're gonna do this year is highlight uh, many different of the dramas and the narratives that occurred during the Civil War in Columbus. And there's so many stories that are very powerful that very few of our students and even teachers uh, are not aware of and we want to rectify that we want to uh, make history come alive in columbus this semester i'm going to be joined by two Columbus State University history education students, Mackenzie O'Keefe and Alex Sturgeon. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad Sunday. to be here. Sunday. Very happy to be here. Alex, you've already had a pretty dramatic semester, is that correct? Yes, very much so. Tell us a little bit. Well, my wife and I uh, just recently welcomed into the world our uh, first child, a son, mm. and uh, we were very excited. It's, uh, it's an adjustment, but it's a miracle. <laughs> I'm very happy to have them. Are you getting some sleep? Uh, we're working on it. We're, we're definitely getting there. <laughs> nice. Trying to get them on a schedule, for sure. And Mackenzie, you've expressed a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for this project. Could you say something about that? Uh, well, I'm very excited for this project because I think it's very important to discover different venues to teach history. And, you know, a, a show like this is a perfect asset to any classroom, I think. And I also think it's important to discover our local history that a lot of, you know, veterans that live here and um, students and teachers alike may not be aware of. So mm. I'm very excited. Tell us some of the stories that we're going to present that, that you're excited about. Well, me personally, I'm excited about um, finding out. I just found out that um, John Pemberton, which is um, the guy who actually came up with the formula for Coke, mm. uh, originated in Columbus, and so did the RC Cola Company. So I'm very excited to explore both of those topics mm. in, in later shows. Alex? I'm very excited to discuss uh, with our audience the famous story of the lost Confederate gold from here in Columbus. Mm. Um, is a story where over approximately $45 million worth of gold uh, went missing after the war. Mm -mm. So, wow. Uh, wow. Exciting. And this is the last known location, which is very exciting. Have either of you ever been to the restaurant called the Cannon Brew Pub downtown? Yes. 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 Wow. And uh, do you know how it got its name? No. no we do now. <laughs> but we do now. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, have you ever heard of Jordan High School? Of course. Absolutely. And do you know what Jordan High School's uh, mascot is? The Red Jackets. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And do you know how that got its name? Well, we do now. We do now. Uh, <laughs> we certainly do now. Today's program, we're going to go through some of that. Are you guys ready to start today's program? I'm ready. Absolutely. Let's do it. Our first program will feature this very important artifact from Columbus history. We're here at the Ironworks in Columbus, and this is the Red Jacket Cannon. A cannon that was made here in 1861 to accompany the Columbus Guards on their many dramatic adventures. And it has a history after the Civil War that's just as dramatic, if not more so. And today we intend to teach you the entire history of the Red Jacket. This replica of the Red Jacket is located downtown here in Columbus at the Cannon Group Hub. Laura Beecher, who was born in Connecticut, the cousin of Harriet Beecher Stowe and Catherine Beecher, as well as the niece of Henry Ward Beecher and Lyman Beecher, came here to Georgia 
debut. When the war broke out, she purchased the Red Jacket Cannon. It was constructed at the Ironworks, and this one, this Red Jacket replica, is here in the center of Columbus at the Cannon Group Hall. After Miss Beecher purchased the cannon and it was constructed, its first task was to signal the inauguration of the new president of the Confederacy. The Columbus Guards took the cannon with them over to Montgomery. And on February 18th, when Jefferson Davis was inaugurated, this was the first cannon that was shot in honor of the new president. Every week as part of this program, History on the Hooch, we hope to introduce a little living history. That is bringing some people from the past into the studio and interviewing them to find out what was going on in their minds and in their worlds. And today as part of our program on the Red Jacket Cannon, we have two very important uh, people to introduce. That is Captain Paul Sims of the Columbus Guards and Miss Laura Beecher or Miss, Mrs. Comer uh, from Columbus, Georgia. Welcome, Captain Sims and uh, Miss Beecher. So glad to have you today. It's an honor to be here. Captain Sims, you had a pretty significant role in the formation of the Columbus Guards, and you have something to do with this, this red jacket and the red jacket cannon. Can you tell us, tell us a little bit about that, would you? Yes, well, um, the Columbus Guard has been around for decades, um, but I was fortunate enough in 1861 when the war broke out to uh, be elected to commander uh, of the Columbus Guards. Um, our first assignment for the Columbus Guards were to be uh, part of the inauguration of President Jefferson Davis. Mm. Um, so we were sitting there um, in our red jackets that um, were financed by Laura Beecher over there. Wow. Yes. So the red jackets that the men were wearing uh, has something to do with why the, this cannon is named what it is. Yes. Oh. Yes. And Miss uh, Beecher or Mrs. Comer, tell us your role in terms of the construction of the, the red jacket. Well, when the war broke out, uh, my husband and I both wished to support the Confederacy in our way of life mm -hmm. through any way that we could. And um, as you know, most people do. In our uh, inner social circle, we uh, count friends among President Jefferson Davis, uh -huh. Vice President Alexander Stevens, as well as Henry Benning and Major Cummings. Wow. And upon reflection between a conversation with uh, myself and Jefferson Davis, he mentioned to me that he was in need of a ceremonial canon of sorts and so I thought that I would finance one that I nicknamed the Red Jacket in honor of his close and personal guards to celebrate his inauguration. Wow. Now, I know you live in Columbus, but you have a first cousin living in New England, uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe. And she, I've read a book that she's written, I believe it's called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Are you, you familiar with your cousin's book? I'm familiar with the fiction that my cousin writes. Fiction, wow. Yes, I am familiar with it. And what's your thoughts about your famous cousin? Well, she has her opinion of what is right, and mm. I have the Bible on my side and the Lord. Wow. So we shall see who comes out on top. Well, what do you think she would think about you financing a Confederate canon? Well, doesn't matter what she thinks because the Lord is on my side. Wow. In Columbus during the war, and it was fired off every time news of a Confederate victory appeared in the newspaper. On Easter Sunday in the year 1865, the people of Columbus were aware that the Union Army under General James Wilson was approaching Columbus with the intent to destroy it. At that point, some men came out here to where I am. They took the Red Jacket Cannon and they threw it in the Chattahoochee River with the hope that the Union Army would not discover it and they could bring it back up after the battle was over. After the battle was over, however, they came to pull the cannon back up out of the Chattahoochee and they couldn't find it. So it was lost in the Chattahoochee until four years later 
When a ship called the Shamrock, a steamboat, came up to load up with some cotton in Columbus, found this cannon, the red jacket, entangled in its anchor. It pulled it up and it took it back to New York City. So your cannon ended up in New York City. Was that the last you ever saw of, of the Red Jacket Cannon? No, actually. Uh, it did remain in New York City for quite some time, but um, Captain Lamar Chappelle of the Columbus Guards was alerted to its presence, thank heavens, and it, he worked very diligently to have my very wonderful and beautiful gift brought back down to Columbus where it was put in the place of the highest honor uh, on the steps of the Columbus Courthouse. Ah, now you said Captain Lamar Chappelle. What happened to Captain Sims? Uh, Captain Sims became a general, actually, but I, I just can't speak of the rest. My dearest wife, I was wounded on the 2nd of July at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I was wounded in the leg, but stopped the flow of blood in the field by a tourniquet applied by myself and drawn by one of my men of the 10th Georgia and lost but little blood. A year later in 1863, General Sims was fatally wounded at the Battle of Gettysburg where he died several days later. He was then buried in West Virginia. A few years after that, however, he was reinterred here at Linwood Cemetery in Columbus, Georgia. When the Red Jacket Cannon was returned here to Columbus, it was placed in front of the old courthouse, which used to be on the property here behind me. It was there until 1930. In 1930, a few thrill-seeking teenagers came in the middle of the night, and they took the Red Jacket Cannon from the carriage here. They took it down to the Chattahoochee River, and there they attempted to fire off the cannon. But in the process, the little ceremonial cannon exploded into three parts. Just a few years later, Jordan Vocational High School opened up. It selected for its mascot the famous little cannon. This replica of the red jacket has been placed here at Jordan High School. The high school has adopted the red jacket as their mascot. The cannon is now on display in the Ironworks building where it was manufactured in 1861. Though broken in three pieces, it has been welded together and it's still recognizable. Wow, that's such a, a, a cool story. But I wonder, Mackenzie and Alex, what is the, what's the meaning of this? What's the value of, of this, this drama that we've learned about today? What do you think? Well, I think that it offers evidence that, you know, not only were, were, was the Civil War with two great armies fought, but it was also more about the community mm. and it was about community involvement and kind of backing your home team, if you will, uh, with uh, Laura Beecher, for example, uh, she and her husband, James, both uh, used their massive wealth to support the Confederacy. They outfitted many um, of the companies in Columbus here. They uh, donated the cannon, obviously. So I think it's just important to to explore that and to make these little stories known. Let's let's talk a little bit about Jordan High School and the Red Jacket mascot. Do you what is the what's the racial mixture of Jordan? Uh, as far as I know, um, it's predominantly African American. Wow. So what? Well, how do you feel about them maintaining this this Confederate cannon as their high school mascot? Any thoughts on that? Well. I think I understand. I understand as as a future educator the necessity to uh, it, to expose my students to um, Confederate symbols and things of that nature. Um, but also, I see the necessity to um, take into account the personal feelings and preferences of the students and faculty alike. So. You know, it's it's one of those controversies where what do you do? Do you change the name of a school that has been that name with that mascot mm. for since its foundation? Or do you say, you know, we can't do that anymore. We're going to have to change it mm. to, to suit the times. Well, what do you think, Alec? I think um, it's important to not hide the history. I think that while it is somewhat controversial uh, topic of, using Confederate symbolism still today. Um, 
I think that it is a fact of what happened back then, and that as a history, while it can be, like I said, controversial, it is part of it, and we should kind of accept it and and accept and do it with the, do with it what we should. Do either of you uh, know of John Wilkes Booth? Have you heard of this character? Of course. Did you not? <laughs> what did he do? He shot Lincoln at Ford's ah. Theater. Did you know that he also himself was shot? No. Yeah, and next week we're going to talk about it. Guess where he was shot? What? What? Louisiana. Geography? Louisiana. Yeah. What was it right here? It is right here on the campus of Columbus State University. We're going to explore that very controversial and very difficult uh, topic that many of us are have been quite unaware of, and it's going to be pretty exciting. So we're looking forward to next week. What do you think? Let's do it. I'm very excited. Very excited, too. See you guys next week on History on the Hooch.